Hey, Pastor Steve Waldron here today. I want to talk to us on what is the difference between the apostolic movement and the Assembly of God, the Assembly of God denomination. Well, the first thing is, is most modern day United States of America apostolics can trace their roots back to the Assembly of God. You know, in 1901, you had their uh, tremendous Holy Ghost outpouring. It was by no means the first. We just had a place in North Carolina had one in 1896 but you know under Charles Fox Parham and that spread to Azusa Street in 1906 with the fascinating history there and then uh, that led to the formation of the Assemblies of God at, Hearts, at Hot Springs Arkansas in 1913 well there was a camp meeting in Arroyo Seco in 1913 with Maria Woodworth Edder and others that were there and a man saw an understanding that the early church baptized in the name of Jesus. Uh, Mr. Scape or Skeppy. It depends on what history you read, but I think they determine it's Scaife now. But uh, anyhow, he goes running through the camp. I see it, I see it. And then McAllister got up during a day session and said, yes, that is in fact how the early church baptized. It went through wildfire all throughout Pentecostal churches all over America. And so, like in Louisiana, 11 out of the 12 churches, Assembly of God churches, were rebaptized in Jesus' name. And so it's always been a very stronghold in a certain sense of the apostolic movement of this day. Over 8% of the state of Louisiana self-identifies as United Pentecostal. And then there's a ton of, of uh, independence in all of this. So you've got that. And so men like Ian Bell, who led the Assembly of God, was rebaptized in Jesus' name, DCO Operman, H.A. Goss, and this type thing. And so there at 1916 in St. Louis, the Assembly of God kicked out in summerly fashion, uh, summerly dismissed them, the apostolics, about 156 ministers there, and they made a very anti-apostolic statement of faith, basically saying, that the apostolic movement was the spirit of antichrist and it, it remains in their articles to this day in their handbook that very strong statement so what is the difference between apostolic churches and the assembly of god well first the assemblies of god would believe the baptism of the holy ghost is not essential for salvation they would say that the baptism of the Holy Ghost is an extra empowerment or endowment for salvation. Uh, but, you know, to empower you to live the Christian life. But you're saved when you think, when you believe, when you repent. And there is some divergence on that. Do you need to repent? Do you need to confess? Does the confession need to be outward? Oh, these type things. But in some sense or form, that they would believe that baptism is not essential and that receiving the baptism of the Holy Ghost is not essential. And really, that's, that's the major differences between the apostolic movement and the Assemblies of God, at least on the subject of soteriology, which is the doctrine of salvation. Now, in Christian living, there are still some Assemblies of God that would believe in traditional holiness of dress. But that has been removed out of their uh, doctrines or belief systems and most assemblies of God no longer teach and preach any type or very minimal types of outward holiness and modesty. Now we jokingly say every church, conservative church, teaches modesty because they're not going to let you up on this platform on a two-piece bathing suit or you know, uh, naked or something like that. They're speedos. So they're going to have some modicum of decency, but it, it's not going to be anywhere, not necessarily based on scripture so much as well. So in Christian living, we would all pray, we would all seek God, we would all believe in praying in tongues, we believe in the gifts of the Spirit, but as far as outward standards, we would have a departure and on subjects like television and Hollywood movies there would be a departure where the Assemblies of God would say it's okay just be careful we would look more towards an absolute prohibition on those things 
So when you go to Assembly of God Church, you might feel the Spirit. Many things you might see the gifts of the Spirit in operation, but there are some rather large differences. And again, Jesus said you must be born again of the water and of the Spirit. So we wouldn't look at these differences even though we love everyone in the assemblies of God and we care and we pray for the assemblies of God and we would acknowledge that many if not most if not almost all would have some relationship with God and care about God very deeply we believe much the same about the scriptures and the infallibility and the inerrancy of the word the inspiration of the scriptures and so it's nothing against them personally it's the doctrinal system that would say hey have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? Um, many Assembly of God historians, Edith Blumhoff or others, have noticed the precipitous decline of people in the Assemblies of God receiving the Holy Ghost. The, Holy, uh, the Assemblies of God, even into the 50s, many Assemblies of God would preach Holy Ghost or Hell. But no longer is that the case. That is a very rare exception just as holiness uh, standards are. They would baptize in the name of the Trinity, the names repeating Father, Son, Holy Ghost, we would say the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost is Jesus. In Jesus dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. So there are some very real differences. Even though we come under the umbrella of uh, the Pentecostal movement, and even though we would kind of trace our roots back together and Durham and the finished work of grace, this type thing, G.T. Haywood began there, went you know, had 158 of his songs taken by the Assemblies of God when he left and, and this type of thing, that uh, there are some very real differences. There are substantive di differences, and they're not something that apostolics can say, hey, they're not big enough that we can fellowship together and stuff. We would love them. We would pray together with them. We would encourage them, but we would encourage them to follow on to New Testament plans of, of salvation and of Scripture. And that breeds a lot of hatred and animosity, and I really don't want it to. Because, again, we love everybody there, but true love is going to share the truth with you. Speaking the truth in love. And so we're going to say, hey, there's more for you. And most honest historians, without a dog in the hunt, would say yes. You know, Frederick Privey, Bruce, others would say yes, the early church believed in the oneness of God and believed in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ is expressed through repentance, water baptism in Jesus' name, reception of the Holy Ghost, exercised by faith, and that this, the early church baptized in Jesus' name, Lars Hartman, others. And uh, so again, we would see those as substantive issues. And I would say too, I, I was reading a letter from 1928 by Parham, and he was saying Goss's group is the only group that has any type of Christianity left in it. Now that was his observation in 1928. I think it was in one of Bishop Tyson's book, James Tyson's book. But be that as it may, we love everybody, but we did want to explain the difference. What is the difference between apostolic churches and the assembly of God? God bless you. Just live by this book. You're going to make it's the only hope. Oh, forget denominations. Forget labels. Live by this. Enter into the kingdom of God. Serve Jesus Christ. You'll make it. God bless you.